In this bite-sized video, I'll be looking at how to use MQTT to send data to the IBM Watson IoT platform. The Watson IoT platform provides APIs to work in a number of different languages and on Node-RED, but sometimes you may want to work in a language or on a platform that's not supported by the Watson IoT APIs. In this case, it may be appropriate to use an MQTT client to send data to the Watson IoT platform. There are many different MQTT client libraries available targeting specific devices or programming languages. There's a list available linked from mqtt.org. In this video, I'm going to use the Node-RED nodes to show you how to use MQTT to send data to the Watson IoT platform. And it should be quite easy to convert the information learned to any of the MQTT client libraries. To start with, I'm going to use the Quick Start service. This is an open sandbox environment that gets you up and running quickly without having to worry about device registration and security. Quick Start shouldn't be used for any production or with any sensitive data, and there are some restrictions on the platform features available. The Watson IoT platform adds some specific requirements on how MQTT is used, and if you don't follow these requirements, your code will not be able to access the platform. The first requirement is to get the address of the broker. For MQTT connections, the address is shown here, but you need to replace org ID with the appropriate organization ID. And for Quick Start, this is just Quick Start. For Quick Start, I'll be using a non-secure connection, so the standard MQTT port of 1883 is used. The next requirement that needs to be satisfied is the device ID. The Watson Internet of Things platform requires that the device ID has a set format. For a device, the client ID is made up as four parts as shown here. The quick start org ID is quick start. The device type can be anything, and the device ID is what you're going to use to access data within the quick start service. If your client ID is not formatted correctly, then the connection will fail. If you have a client ID that another person is using, you may find that your connection to the quick start service disconnects. So try pick a device type and device ID that create a unique client ID. With the correct broker address and client ID, I can now connect to the Quick Start service on the platform. And now I have a connection, I want to send some data. The Watson IoT platform provides security around the data within the platform, which limits data available to any connection. A device connected to the platform can publish events and register to receive commands. A device cannot see events published by other devices and can only see commands sent to itself. When publishing events or subscribing for commands, the topics used must also follow a specific format. If you try and use a topic that doesn't adhere to the required format, the platform will reject the message. When sending data from a device, the format is as shown. The event ID can be any string that's valid in the MQTT protocol. You can define your own set of events needed by your application so subscribers can choose what event data they want to receive. The format can also be any valid string allowed by the MQTT protocol and tells a subscriber what the format of the data within the message is. If you want the Quick Start user interface to visualize your data, then JSON data format should be used. The message content should adhere to the data format specified in the topic. I can now send data to the platform using the MQTT node and have the data formatted using the Quick Start user interface. Now Quick Start is working, I'm going to move to a deployed instance of the platform, where the data is protected by the platform and access is only permitted from applications presenting the correct credentials. I'm deploying a new instance of the IoT platform. Note this isn't yet available in all Bluemix regions, so if IoT platform isn't available in your catalog, then you'll need to move to a region that does have the IoT platform, such as Germany and UK in Europe, or US South region. In the platform console, I'm going to create two new device types, one for a gateway and one for a device. Gateways provide access for devices without direct access to the internet, such as devices connected using protocols other than TCP IP, or devices without direct access to the internet. After creating the device types, I'm going to register two new devices. One device is a gateway, the other a normal device. When registering the device, it's important you make note of the, the data presented at the end of the registration process. 
as this information is needed when connecting to the platform and cannot be recovered if forgotten after the screen is closed. When developing, I tend to enter a standard token for all my devices, so I don't have to remember what security token is used with each device. I'm going to use Node-RED to send MQT data into my instance of the Watson IoT platform. Again, I need a broker address and client ID, but this time, instead of quick start, I need to use the org ID for my instance of the Watson Internet of Things platform. I can find this information from the Bluenix dashboard or the Watson IoT platform dashboard. The client ID is created with the same four parts, substituting the org ID, device type, and device ID. When using my own instance of the Watson IoT platform, I additionally need to enter security details. These consist of the user, which is always use token auth, then the device token used when registering the device. With the broker address, client ID, and security details entered, I can now connect to the platform. Switching to the Watson IoT console, I can see the device is now connected with an insecure connection, and I also see the data being published. In addition to devices being able to connect to the platform, you can send data from a device via a gateway. Gateways are allowed to publish data on behalf of another device. If you connect a gateway the same way you connect a device, apart from the client ID starts with a G instead of a D. And when sending data, there is an updated topic that allows a gateway to publish events on behalf of a device. You can see that a device type and device ID are included in the topic. So I can publish data on behalf of the gateway itself or on behalf of a device by setting the device type and device ID appropriately. You now know how to use the, the various MQTT libraries to access the Watson IoT platform.